this is going to be game number two between Omega as well as RRQ Hoshi. Now, with the compositions that they ha have set in stone here for both teams, Welcome they do have a lot of um, layers to it, right? Because we have RRQ Hoshi on one hand with really extreme crowd control, but on the other hand, they have Kufra as well. So, in terms of composition, Fel, who do you prefer more? Looking at the composition, I would say, again, RRQ, honestly, just because the way that they have to play this game is a little bit easier compared to Omega because they have to do a lot of mechanical outplays to get anything happen in the game because, like, Kufra has to make sure that he gets on the correct target. And the same thing can be said about Ryzen. He has to go in, he has to survive, and he has to give enough space for Ethermax to deal out the damage. And right now, in a, a quite earlier stages of the game, but so far, yeah, I, I feel like RRQ Oshi, they have a more sturdier draft. I definitely agree. But R7 now, he is going to be going on a matchup against Kakito. Do you think this is a good matchup? Because I feel like Masha is going to completely dominate this lane unless Red Seal is going to be able to do so much. I feel like the Pakito force coming in from Omega was just intentionally just targeted onto its Albert. And we talked about how Link, his Ling is just a force to be begin with. And I feel like Omega, they're just focusing on Albert a little bit too much on the draws, but hopefully it is going to work out. But now, Chakra with the engagements onto his win, is there going to be any sort of follow-up coming from Omega? Seems like they are not going to continue as Albert just hit his four just right in their faces. They do not want to overcome this day. I mean, in the early game, I feel like in that mid side, RQ Hoshi is a bit on the behind. Just saying, because that's a Celian, they, he needs a little bit more items, he needs a little bit more uh, scaling potential to be able to deal out the damage that is required of him. Meanwhile, Eve can just slow and use her utility from the get go, especially when she hits level 4. So, with that in mind, hopefully Omega can actually use that to their advantage and capitalize over this fact. But for the moment, it is going to be that turtle already being placed into the Land of Dawn, and we'll see who gets there first. Yep, the first turtle. It's gonna be up for grabs. You can see they has been set up coming from RRQ Hoshi as well. Vin a little bit afraid to do so as well. Ryzen does have a kill potential to and punish, but it seems like there is gonna be a split fight onto with the purple buff as well. Albert still trying to secure his purple buff, but looks like he is gonna lose out on the retribution war and Ryzen will come up on top. Now opportunity has been presented itself as well. Albert popping the Tempest Blade. He does not have the immunity, and this is Omega's time to shine as they finally pop the revolution, catches off clay, and now R7 is in a very, very awkward situation. Renzo is trying to eat challenges fight eventually waits for Ryzen to save the day as Ryzen completely snowballs them all out. So this is the opportunity that Omega has been looking forward to. Double kill for the side of Omega now with a 1000 gold lead and that is it. That's exactly what we need to see, right? Give Chuck knew a hero that he can use to find those types of momentums in the game and they will definitely deliver. So now from the side of Araki Hoshi, how are they going to maneuver around this? Understanding that the Ling is going to have a difficult time and may be able to be inhibited by the movements from Chuck Mamba himself. Well, again, looking at the draft, they have multiple win conditions, not just on the link, but Clay as well as Kyler. They can dish out a lot of damage, and they can dish it out from a long range. So as long as the Grok win over here can make sure that he can control Omega's uh, rotation, giving enough uh, enough information for Clay and Skylar to actually do their, their, their farm in an optimal way, they can eventually scale up and be a problem for the side of Omega because they want to go in one, two, three, three members of the side of Omega will dash straight into RKO. She's probably trying to uh, catch Clay off guard. But as long as Clay survives, they should be good. I definitely agree. But as of yet, RKO, they have to play this a little bit safe. They cannot give too much of a lead towards Ryzen. And I've talked about this earlier as well. The Karina excels at being snowballing. And somehow, playing safe right now does not help Omega as well. It's pretty, pretty counterproductive. Especially that Ryzen has been given a two-kill lead as of yet. Looking at this game, Ryzen, the way that he's playing, I feel like it's fine. I feel like it is okay. I th I think that they're, they're just trying to see what RQ Hoshi, like the way that they want to respond. Because Omega, they, they, they started off being very aggressive. But how aggressive is aggressive? I want them to pick it up a little bit as, uh, as well. But I want them to focus on one lane, get two turrets, and then they can properly set up a, a map control situation, making sure that Clay and Skylar will have a difficult time to actually position themselves. Agreed. Smart plays coming from RK as well, not contesting the second turtle, knowing that this does not worth it. They have to play a little bit more on their next level spike, which is probably by the third turtle phase, which is about 100 seconds before they RQ decide to force the issue. Elber now 
has been safe, safe farming very, very safely throughout this entire, entire fight. But when he comes out for the third turtle fight, I'm pretty sure things are going to be in his favor. But Omega, looks like they are going to try and greet things out to try and take an objective up top before hitting down bottom. We'll see what happens here. It does seem like Omega wants to push for this, and there doesn't seem to be any answers coming in from RQ Hoshi. I do understand that they need to be a little bit more patient because they're waiting for those power spikes to show, especially that they do have the Sicilian. But how patient do they have to be? Because they're basically conceding all these objectives on the board just so easily onto Omega, right? One turtle, two turtles have actually already been taken by the side of Omega. One turret to their name as well. And what can Araki Hoshi do? Because sure, give them the objective in those neutral objectives like the turtle, but look for some compensations on the board. If Omega wants to rotate, look for some mirror movements. I think that's something that they need to do. They want to avoid fights, but they're losing a little bit too much in the process. Pay attention to the mini map right now. As you can see, Chakno is so far back. He's trying to find a setup to go in for the engagements as well in case Araki Hoshi decides to back off. And seems like Omega, they want to try and force a fight right now before it happens. But Chakno, look at this. He's going for that rush. He does catch onto his play. And here comes the setup. Elbert was too busy with the purple. Bobo cannot do anything at all. And that's going to be Omega going for the perfect catch. Ha Nu, what an amazing game sense coming in. Six minutes in, already 3-0. to zero. So once again, Omega really showing their dominance here in game number two. This is a huge difference to game number one. And what has this, why has this happened here, LaFell? Yeah, this is why, say for the side of Omega, what they're trying to do is actually get two turrets first, making sure that they have the map control and try to get onto Clay. And that is what is happening right now, especially since Clay is using the Spirit, not a Purify. So once Kufra gets on top of him, there's not really anything that he can do. But the side of Araki Hoshi, I kind of feel like they should try to take an opportunity opportunity to outplay mechanically wise because again these players are super talented i feel like if you if, if they force a fight they could potentially do something with it i don't know that's just me i definitely agree but rk Oshi, they've tried to wait for the moment before the third turtle coming they needed albert on that purple buff before winning the setup uh, for the setup as well and omega was able to actually catch them off guard and that was so so smart especially coming from chuck new from the back lines because i wouldn't expect a flying Kufra from all the way back and <laughs> they are pretty much in a blind spot as well because if you play a mobile phone off of the screen there is no way in heck that Clay is going to be able to spot that out because of that blind spot which is on the bottom left on the screen. Yeah, right now the real one mission has been set up and R7 is going straight on to e 2 Max. e 2 Max taking a lot of damage. Finn is being chunked down as well. And look at Kelra. Kelra going straight for Skylar. So far, no kills have been had. Only e 2 Max has been taken down. But for the side of Arkyoshi, they're still healthy. But they're not really trying to get any more out of, the, out of this fight. They still just want to farm. Omega is playing it so disciplined as well. They're not giving any, like, cracks for our Kihoshi to actually capitalize on. They're being very objective, they're being very disciplined. As now we're going to take a little peek into the player's gold, we see that three members from the side of Omega Esports are going to be dominating in that area with Ryzen now at the top of that leaderboard. So this Karina, like you mentioned before, IC oh, Baby wow. has actually snowballed from that early game. But what I'm surprised is Renzio is actually top on that damage dump. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Uh, I feel like this snowball coming from Omega is good, but I feel like it's not hot enough yet. And RQ, they are still mirror matching up because if you compare the levels between both Albert as well as Raisin, Raisin is level 12. Albert is also level 11. It's not that far behind, so it's still a very doable situation. It's all about buying for the time, but as of yet, RQ, they're going to make an attempt here down bottom. Renz is all by himself, but this is an annoying Paquito. Meanwhile, mid late, however, Skylar is going to take a little bit too much damage, but it seems like Omega will not press the issue. So that is going to be a failed attempt coming from Omega to get a little bit more out of this situation. But look at those minions really, really pushing it in that top side. And another turret has been secured for the side of Omega. So more space, more objectives on the board, and more of that gold lead as now they are turning their focus into this. Oh next no, board. Albert! Ooh. Albert, what are you thinking? He's going for a Tempest Blade. He's down to 1 HP. He tried to go for the steal. Unfortunately, doesn't have enough to take. Look at him. He's going to make a run for it as well. But it seems like the rest of the team coming from Omega will just completely say, Elbert is not here, let's just kill whoever is in front of us and they will take R7 with him. Omega, continue to snowball with this lead as of yet. I feel like RQ Hoshi, this is a, a rare thing to say, but th maybe they're playing it a little bit too slow because looking at what happened just now, two members for the side of RQ Hoshi, Al including Albert, went and tried to fight against Renzio and Renzio had no issues at all. He only has two defensive items over here. 
and it looks like Albert does not have enough damage, probably because he's he's focusing on a crit build. So once he has full crit rate, then he can really dish out a lot of damage. But again, Arkyoshi, based on the itemization that they have, they're really slowing down the game. But I do want to see Clay. I hope in this, uh, even in, in, in installing the game out, he's getting a lot of stacks because we really need Clay to step up right now to make sure that Omega does not end the game. Oh, Rezio, he's going to get caught off. This is going to make the opportunity that RQ Oshi has been eyeing for, but the Lord is still knocking on the top side. Real Moon comes in. Kera does have the crossbow tanks. R7 is going to be able to back out. Vin looking to re-engage. The post coming from Clay is going to be able to clean out the minions here. Chaknu losing a little bit too much damage. Albert finally shows himself, but he just doesn't have enough damage to do anything. They're just so, so, so very tanky coming from Omega. Yeah, and RQ Oshi, they're so far behind. I mean, now with that previous 4,000 gold lead has actually reached and crept up to that extra 2,000. So they only got one in that sense. Renzio was taken down and Omega, of course, was forced to back off. But Chaknu here seems like he's waiting for that right opportunity once again here as maybe this might be one of the last moments here from the side of RQ Hoshi. Yep, it's going to be very difficult to do so, but you can see RQ is still playing it very, very safe. Finally, they are going to be making a play as well. As you can see, Elbert is trying his best to stall the game as long as they can to try and go in for the split push. But in terms of objective, pay attention to Omega's turrets. None of the turrets on their side are still even chipped up as well. It's relatively healthy, especially for Tier 1. So there's just so much map control coming from Omega. And who could blame RQ that they're being oppressed right now? And I feel, I, I really like that they're still trying to make some sort of play. And it's going to be a lot of emphasis on Albert, whether or not can he capitalize on the economy across the maps. And right now, actually, you know, just a small fun fact thingy, right? Chaknu and E2 Max both have a 100% kill participation as of right now because all four kills they are involved in. And looking at the gold difference, we, we, we see it reflected on the, the items over here, especially on the 1-1. One, one, already have the Demon Under Sword, Kurgeon Scythe, uh, even the Wind of Nature. So even if Albert tries to aim for the 1-1, one, one, it's not going to be fruitful. So whenever they do decide to go for a team fight, they have to have this mental note that Kelra has a Wind of Nature. So don't try to kill him off first. Perhaps try to go for the E2 Max, but with how E2 Max is is positioning himself, it looks like he will get them before they can actually go towards Kelra or E2 Max. Oh, this might be the go-to plan as well. Albert's about to hit the 15. With the Trunkin up on Clay, means they can try and prolong this fight. However, Kelra, he will be able to park the crossbow tanks. R7 is forced to run for his life. Here comes the crossbow tanks, and R7 might actually fall right here, and that is going to be it. R.K. Hoshi, a little bit afraid to do so, but Kelra is going to be so far away from the rest of the team as he gets bound up, and that is going to be a well worth it trade. A marksman for an XP laner, but can they get a little bit more? However, Omega, they really he said to the Lord, they could not get those objectives. So this is a small window of an opportunity for RRQ to come back because of that play. Yeah, huge play there coming in and a little bit too overcommitted from the side of Kalra. Sure, you get a pick on the board, but losing yourself in the process was not a good trade. And now it does seem like Omega, they still want to continue with the process of oppression. But unfortunately, with the way that RRQ Hoshi now starting to reach their power spikes, I'm actually quite interested to see how far of itemization Clay has actually gone into as Albert goes in very aggressively here. No, it looks like they are going to force the play as well. Kalra just got back from the base. He needs to run all the way back here to back up Omega RRQ. They are thinking about going for the fights as well. The more barriers do isolate the fight, but they are a little bit afraid because of how low Albert's HP is. And he doesn't even have the purple buff. Seems like it's playing it safe once again coming from RRQ Oshi and Omega. They understand this. They are going to try and force the Lord here. Vin, trying to reset the Lord. Unfortunately, not going to happen with the Guardian's barrier as of yet. But the Lord down to a 10% threshold. Where is Albert? They need him on the sides. But no, he got stopped at the track on the sides as well. And he almost pays the price as Omega was was ready to stop him in his track for his cheeky play. Albert going for the recall. Renzio a little bit too close, but RQ, they will lose Vin, but they also the lot trade. Right now, looking at how RQ is proceeding, I feel like part of the problem is Omega right now knows how Albert moves around the map, and that is why we can see some of his uh, rotations are actually getting disturbed. Now, I feel like RQ Hoshi, they have more or less an idea, and the way that they want to play this team fight is actually to capitalize on how Omega thinks, uh, especially looking at what Kelra did just now. If they can force over extensions coming from the side of Omega, because again, I did state out, they have three members that want to go in, three melee heroes that want to get close up, up, at, uh, up and personal with RQ Hoshi, but Kelra, if he keeps playing on like that, then they can eventually capitalize on those mistakes. But right now, 7,000 gold lead and the Lord 
is marching up. Omega, this is their game to lose. Uh oh, R7, he almost got the proc away with the crossbow tanks. Omega can't seem to abuse it as well, but R Oshi, they're holding on with the inhibitor, trying to chip away at the Lord and try to stall this as much as they can. And that was a very, very quick lockdown, uh, sorry, clear down on towards the Lord as of yet. But R Oshi, they're still trying their best, trying to conceal from the sides. He wants to go in for the cash, but it is still two very, very tanky heroes. So playing it safe, Omega, they don't want to force more as well. Renzi are trying to bait out wall charge. Win is going to be able to do that, but they are still focusing on the inhibitors coming from Omega, chipping away very, very slowly at all the objectives as of yet. As RQ doesn't want to force the fight yet, just because Skylar has not hit 15 yet. The problem is now only one member from the side of Arakihoshi has used that ultimate, so they might want to be able to wait for that because all those resources were actually baited, and now Omega looks like they're going in. Yep, this is it. Skylar he will be forcing a flicker as well. Win is going to be the first to fall. R7 trying to make a little bit more as well. Kelra forcing crossbow attacks. They need to back out. They have nothing as well. And this is going to be RQ trying to force a fight. But R7 taking a little bit too much damage. Albert shows with the Temples of Blade. Can they get the kill? No, they cannot. Ryzen with the with the trunk and clutch is going to completely negate all this damage. And RQ Oshi, they will lose four. And it's only up to play. And Omega will come up on top just like that as they will close out game number two potentially as Clay, the last man's. Standing, not going to be able to do too much as Omega bounce back and tie the series against RRQ Hoshi. The defending champions take it to a 1 2 1, really putting RRQ Hoshi in their place here in game number two. And <laughs>